Installhub.com. Streamlining your installations. Hey, 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 another week, another podcast. We've made it to Friday, the 28th of July. Let's see what's been happening this week, and it's been a busy one. Firstly, plans to expand London's controversial clean air scheme across all 33 boroughs of the UK capital can go ahead after the High Courts on Friday dismissed a legal challenge to the plan. The challenge has been brought by five councils, which argued that a public consultation for the ultra-low emission zone was flawed and that London's Mayor Sadiq Khan exceeded his powers in introducing the scheme. But Mr Justice Jonathan Swift ruled that he was satisfied that the expansion was within the mayor's power and the public consultation was lawful. The scheme, which Labour blamed for its failure to seize Uxbridge in a recent by-election, is due to start on August the 29th and imposes a £12.50 daily charge on drivers of older and more polluting vehicles. So we like to talk about range anxiety, but the reality is we're dealing with charging anxiety when it comes to EVs. Now, it's great that electric vehicles can cover 300 miles on a charge, but if the infrastructure is spared and in many cases not working correctly, the ability to cover hundreds of miles on a single charge just means you're hundreds of miles from home if things go wrong. But there's another way to keep EVs on the road and Daimler's truck and bus division Mitsubishi Fuso is testing out a solution from Ample. The Northern Californian startup has had battery swapping stations on the ground in the San Francisco Bay Area for a few years, servicing select drivers with specially modified cars. Partnering with Mitsubishi Fuso to outfit the latest version of the company's e-center electric light duty panel trucks validates Ample's business model and it could keep those delivery trucks on the road for far longer during the day. So what do you think? If you're an EV driver, would you rather just swap out the battery or struggle to charge? What do you reckon? In other news, Ford has pushed back the goal of producing 600,000 all-electric vehicles to the next year after its Model E business unit reported massive operation losses of $1.8 billion in the second quarter, while operating margins were at 58.9%. However, the unit responsible for the EVs also reported revenue of $1.8 billion in the previous quarter, according to Ford's latest earnings report. That's more than doubling from last year, thanks to increasing sales of the F-150 Lightning pickup, which saw 4,466 units moved in quarter two, which was up 118.7% compared to the same period last year. At the same time, though, Mustang Mach-E sales fell 21.1% year over year, while the EV's unit figures as a whole were down 2.8% compared to the first quarter. In June, however, the firm's EV sales were back up 35.5%. It's an interesting one, isn't it? It's a very tricky game trying to balance this EV industry. I don't think Ford are doing too bad, though. Worcester Council is more than doubling the number of EV charging points in city car parks. Work starts on the eight new bays in King Street Car Park on Thursday, with 12 additional points planned at Tallow Hill Car Park from the 4th of August. The work will add to 12 existing EV points and mean a small reduction in other parking spaces. The council said it was vital the necessary infrastructure was provided ahead of the petrol and diesel sales bans. The committee approved in June the expansion of its EV charging network at a cost of up to £55,000. Excitingly this week, more information has been revealed about the new Mini Cooper EV. This time, they're outlining the car's all-new infotainment system following the reveal of the car's cabin design. Mini says the new three-door only coupe hatch boasts a new operating system, Nine software setup that handles information and other elements of the driving experience through the ultra-slim 9.4-inch round OLED display that dominates the car's dashboard. I mean, Minis have always looked very cool inside, but really, it does look very, very cool. The new tech has been developed in-house by the brand, with the system based on Android software, opening up a new world of personalization potential and feature 
availability to owners. Basically, these driving modes tune to the use of LED light throughout the cabin, including projections on the fabric dash top if the light projector is specified to alter the feel of the cabin based on the mode selected. This is teamed with new sound signature that enhances the experience according to Mini. Core is the default mode and is linked to new driving sounds that can be heard both inside and outside the new car, the latter of course helping to warn pedestrians. Although it has always amused me that EVs are so silent yet you can add engine sounds. <laughs> it's a bit ironic that one isn't it? London-based electric vehicle charging app EV Energy has received a funding surge of 25.8 million in its Series B round. Launched in 2018, the startup counts National Grid, Volkswagen Group, Maxon and Siemens as customers as part of its 120,000 daily users. The company will use the latest investment drive to boost its presence internationally with expansion in the UK and North America. Some will be pleased to hear that General Motors has cancelled plans to eliminate the Chevrolet Bolt, one of the cheapest battery-powered cars in the US market, as it pursues ambitions to rapidly electrify its fleet. The largest US car maker by revenue said on Tuesday that while it still intends to retire the current version of the car at the end of the year, it would keep the nameplate while switching the propulsion system to newer battery technology. Our customers love the Bolt, said Chief Executive Mary Barra. We can't build enough. BT Group has announced this week that its startup and digital incubation team will over the next two years conduct technical and commercial pilots to convert or upgrade its street cabinets for electric vehicle charging units. The pilots will provide critical insight into the viability to scale EV charging to more locations across its estate. The cabinets are currently used for providing copper-based broadband and phone services and will be decommissioned as the ambition nationwide upgrade to fill fibre processes. The first phase of the EV charging pilots, open to Openreach and BT Group colleagues, is planned to kick off in Northern Ireland in the autumn of 2023 and will expand to the public with more pilot locations added across the UK later this year. While at an early stage, if successful, this could make an important contribution to decarbonising the transport system and supporting the UK's plans to get to net zero. Now, every week here on the pod, I have been following and giving you the information about the latest proposals for solar farms. Now, I'm pleased to say permission was granted to British Solar Renewables Energy for the farm, which will lie west of the World's End Farm in Clapton, near Berkeley in Gloucestershire. Around 160 acres of field will be covered in ground-mounted photovoltaic panels. The 50 megawatt solar panel installation, which will be allowed to be there for 45 years, can power up to 12,500 homes. It can also save more than 11,702 tonnes of CO2 emissions per year. Sadly though, it's not all good news. Plans for two major solar farm projects in Lincolnshire have been rejected by council planners. South Kesteven District Council said the farms would lead to the loss of agricultural land and impact food production. Developers Green Switch had proposed a 63-acre site on land at Washdyke Farm near Falkingham. Light Source SPV217 Limited also submitted plans for a solar farm on a 173-acre site near Gonaby Moor, but again that was also rejected. It's not the end of the road for solar panels though. Schools in Wakefield are to have solar panels installed to reduce their environmental impact. Up to 22 schools will have panels fitted on their school roofs or in their grounds to enable classrooms to be powered by renewable energy. Wakefield Council said the £2 million project could cut the city's greenhouse gas output by 456 tonnes a year. The plans were approved by councillors at a cabinet meeting this Monday. Jack Hemingway, who's the cabinet member for environmental and climate change, told the meeting the really positive scheme would also provide funding for climate education for children at the school. A shortlist has been drawn up after the city schools were assessed for sustainability for solar panels, which will feed renewable energy directly into the buildings according to the local democracy reporting service.
this. And actually, there's a bit of history to this one because it seems that solar panels and education uh, have gone full circle. Now, in 1861, a French maths teacher, Austin Mouchot, was so concerned that world supplies of coal would eventually run out that he invented ways of using solar power, starting with a solar water heater for baths and a solar oven for cooking. And in 1866, he invented a solar-powered steam engine using curved shiny metal to focus the sun's rays onto a tube filled with water, turning the water to steam, which then drove an engine. Musha also showed his latest solar engine at the World's Fair in Paris in 1878. The sun's rays were concentrated in a reflective metal cone focused on a boiler attached to a heating power refrigerator device that produced blocks of ice. It caused a sensation with audiences watching in amazement to see ice made by solar power. Musha also used a solar powered steam engine to drive a printing press and a water pump for irrigation. The exhibition in 1878 also marked the rise to international combustion engines at just the time when coal and oil were becoming much cheaper and so interest in solar energy and engines rapidly faded and it took more than 100 years before modern solar power was looked at again and now it's on school roofs i like that and finally, if you don't have plans this weekend, then maybe on Sunday you will visit the Isle of Wight because they're having the largest electric vehicle and green technology show. It's returning to the IW College after the highly successful event in 2022 saw almost a thousand people attend. It promises to be even bigger and better this Sunday. It's free to attend and free to park. There's 40 exhibitions and display stands that are providing information on everything from the latest latest EVs and EV charging to renewable energy. It's also got e-bikes and motorbikes, marine innovations, green home ideas and EV driving schools and a full day of fascinating talks at this unmissable event. The event is open from 10am to 4pm and it's free to attend and park as I've said and it's on the Isle of Wight. So that's all from me, from everybody here at Install Hub. We hope as ever that you have a fantastic weekend and I'll be back with you next Friday.